This 128GB AI PC is an absolute AI powerhouse. Powered by an AMD Ryzen AI processor, dual Intel 10 gigabit networking, with dual USB 4 and a host of new features to make it look absolutely more Apple Mac Studio-like, there is a lot going on in the system, so we'll, let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is the B-Link GTR9 Pro. This is B-Link's awesome new system based on the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, which is a complete mouthful, but it is an awesome little AI processor. At the same time, this is the Apple Mac Studio M3 Ultra 512 gig edition. This is a $10,000 PC and is absolutely great in terms of AI performance because it has a ton of memory. But on the other hand, this is a much more affordable system at under $2,000. And not only did I want to talk about this system, but I also wanted to talk about these two over here. Now, these are two other AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 systems. And I think that this might be the best system for a lot of folks, but we found some interesting things when we actually started testing this. So I think we have a lot to get into today. With that, let's get to the hardware. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the chassis on this system, because you might think that originally like these things are the exact same, the Mac Studio in this. And I think B-Link definitely took inspiration from the Apple Mac Studio, but on the other hand, you can see that the system is quite a bit smaller than the Mac Studio. And by the way, this is the new GTI machine, and you'll just see that it is noticeably larger than the little Intel-based system, but of course, it's much more powerful. So, you know, it's, it's a trade-off in terms of size, but I also really like what B-Link is doing in terms of a design direction. And I just want to show you guys really quickly some of the differences uh, between this and some of the other systems that we have that are on the market and that we've already tested. So this one is the first one that we did. The GMK Tech has this like external power adapter, so it's not all internal. So the power solution is just more elegant on the B-Link, right? And aside from the power adapter, the B-Link also has some other features like better networking. So I do think that this is an upgrade to the GMK Tech. Of course, it's coming out later than the GMK Tech. So, you know, on the other hand, I guess if you wanted something early, this was a much better system. But on the other hand, I think the newer generations are gonna have some new features that I think folks are gonna want. And one other thing I wanted to do was a quick comparison of this versus the framework desktop. I think a lot of folks are very excited about this one. And I was frankly jazzed about this when I got it. There are some big differences though, right? The framework frankly costs a lot more. Also, it comes in pieces, so we had to put it together, which is something you don't have to do with the B-Link. In terms of size, I actually think the B-Link might be a little bit smaller, or at least it seems a little bit smaller, if you can see that right here. But then the other big difference is also the fact that you get better networking on the B-Link. Okay, but with that, let's start talking about some of the features that you get on this. Now, first, you get this little power button, which is not just a power button, it's also a fingerprint reader, so you can do things like Windows Hello, if you just really like uh, using your fingerprint, you can do that. Plus, there's also an audio jack. Then there's a SD card slot on the framework. For example, you have to go and add a SD card slot via one of the optional modules versus this has it built in. So that's just a nice little feature. The next feature that you have though is a USB type C port. Now this is only a USB 3.2 gen two ports, so a 10 gigabit per second port, but it's not necessarily uh, you know, a USB 4 port. One of the features I wanted to point out was on the front of this, we have a four microphone array. That four microphone array is there because in theory, it gives you diversity in how you each of the microphones is picking up the background environment, and so you're able to go and do some noise canceling. I don't necessarily think that I love these solutions in general, but on the other hand, it is something that B-Link has been doing to increase the production quality of their units is coming up with better and better microphone options. Now on the back of this, we get a headset jack, plus we get two USB 4 ports. Those are 40 gigabit per second ports, which are absolutely awesome. You gotta love USB 4 ports these days because, well, they're just darn fast. Two other features though, are that we get the display port and the HDMI out. So in addition to the USB 4 display, Play output capabilities, we have those. So it just gives a little bit of extra connectivity to the system if you wanna go run a whole bunch of displays. In addition to the USB 4 ports, we also get two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and they are actually labeled. This is something that B-Link has started to do. And I love the fact that they're starting to label ports. Thank you B-Link for doing this. Now perhaps one of the biggest features is the LAN configuration. This uses the Intel E610 dual 10 gigabit networking solution, which is actually a pretty high end NIC setup. A lot of the other mini PCs are coming with five gigabit per second NICs or maybe 10 gigabit per second NICs, but this is Intel's like new 10G based T adapter. You can run 
slower speeds, of course, if you want, but on the other hand, it provides a lot of performance in a relatively you know, compact system like this. This is probably one of the best, if not the best NIC that we've seen in a mini PC thus far. If we're just talking about raw built-in networking capabilities, that means that the B-Link is actually faster than our 10 gig Mac Studio. So, uh, well, at least there's that. And just quickly showing you the bottom, this is definitely Mac Studio inspired, as you can see. Now let's get inside the system and talk about what makes this special. Now, the big feature inside of this is the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, which is a 16-core 32-thread processor. And that 16-core 32-thread processor is, of course, great. But the big feature, of course, is the AMD Radeon 8060S graphics. That's what gives you all of the performance because AMD basically said, hey, we're going to take our big processor and we're going to go put a relatively large GPU IP. Now, this is not necessarily something that's like a NVIDIA RTX 5090 class GPU. Think of it more like maybe a desktop 4060 or maybe a 4070 mobile or something like that. So, you know, it is definitely a lot better than, um, you know, a lot of the integrated graphic solutions that you get elsewhere, but it's not necessarily like the top, top end of graphics that you can get. On the other hand, the thing that makes this very different is that instead of using SODIMS for our DDR5 memory, it uses LPDDR5X. Now, practically, this system comes with 128 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory. That allows the memory to run at faster speeds, but it comes at a consequence. And that big consequence is the fact that you can't upgrade it. So there's no way that you like open this up and you're gonna go and just like throw in a little SODIM and have more memory. You get 128 gigabytes, so it is something that you have to get when you order the system. The other thing though, is that it needs that LPDDR5X memory to go and run at higher memory bandwidth. So that way the SOC has the memory bandwidth to go run, not just for the CPU, but also for the GPU a little bit faster. So a lot of AI workloads are not just memory capacity bound or compute bound, they're also memory bandwidth bound. Now, this of course does not have the same amount of memory bandwidth as something like an M3 Ultra 5 12 gig, but on the other hand, it is more than you would get in some of the lower end mini PCs. And that's really one of the big things that's different here. Now, aside from that, you can get inside the system and get to the SSDs. I always wish that it was just a little bit easier to get to the SSDs, but they still have a decent cooling solution and everything that you would need to go and run two SSDs. Now, with that 128 gigabytes of memory on the SSD side, we get a two terabyte M.2 SSD. And frankly, I'm really happy that the B-Link folks decided to do the two terabyte instead of a one terabyte. Also, if you have actually done a lot of work with AI development, something that you will find very quickly is that you need a decent amount of storage just to go and download large models. And of course, if you want to, there is a second M.2 slot. So if you want to go expand with a four terabyte drive, for example, you can totally go do that. But I think a lot of folks are just going to instead use network storage and have a NAS where you have maybe many, many terabytes of storage and you can store models there and then use the fast networking to deliver the data to the system. I think this could be a very popular model in a class of systems like this. Now, of course, that's really the main set of features, CPU, memory, and storage, but there are a couple other things that we should mention. First off, there are some speakers in here. I don't really think that they're great speakers, but it does have internal speakers. So if you need them, you at least have that. You also have the internal power supply, which takes up room in the chassis. But on the other hand, I like having the internal power supply, so I have no problem with that as well. But I think the other big thing is that most of the system is actually there just for cooling the processor. So this is supposed to run at like 140 watts. It definitely needs a lot of cooling to do that. And I think that having a larger chassis allows B-Link to do cooling at a relatively low noise level. I think that is absolutely great, by the way. With that, let's talk about the performance. Okay, so talking about the performance, first off, AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 with 16 cores, 32 threads is absolutely great in terms of CPU performance. We have the latest AMD Zen 5 architecture, so we get a darn good, just frankly, just it's a great CPU for anything that you want to go do, unless you just need something crazy and then you're starting to talk about things like Threadripper. So to me, great CPU in this. The other thing, though, is really the GPU side. And when we looked at the GPU performance, this performed darn well. In fact, now that we have a couple of these systems, we made a little comparison of just a couple things, including Geekbench, also Geekbench AI, and just talking about some of the differences of performance. 
Now, since one of the big features in this is the 128 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory, one of the things that you have to do is really make a decision between the CPU memory and GPU memory and what that split should be. Now, our system came configured like this, and you can see in the AMD Adrenaline Edition software behind me that we have a 32 gigabytes for system memory, but 96 gigabytes for the GPU memory. And let me be clear, that is a huge feature. That's like getting an NVIDIA RTX Pro 6000 Blackwell edition in terms of memory capacity, but not necessarily the memory bandwidth and compute and all that kind of stuff, right? So a dedicated card is of course gonna be faster, but it's also more expensive just for that card versus this. What that 96 gigabytes of memory allows you to do is run larger models. And just showing you what that looks like, I have LM Studio behind me. And in here, we have the GPT OSS 120B model running, and uh, it actually is running pretty darn well. So here, what you'll see is that it's running at 31.4 and change. Some folks are getting like 32 out of the box tokens per second, which means that it's running pretty fast. And as a large model, the quality of this thing is really good. I mean, to me, the big benefit of running a big model like this is just the fact that you can rely on the outputs to a higher degree than some of the smaller models that frankly give you weird results. So let me give you another example. I'm just showing you how fast this thing is, right? So you can see this behind me. It's cruising pretty fast in its thinking phase. I even made a little spelling error because I was looking at the camera instead of actually looking at the screen. And instead of configure, I put configure, I guess. Uh, and it managed to figure that out, no problem. It's running through its reasoning phase, it's thinking, and you can see the token generation on this is pretty quick. Now, of course, if you're gonna go use a high-end cloud service, it's gonna be faster, but 34 tokens or 31 tokens per second is pretty darn fast, especially for a model like this. And one of the reasons that we're able to run GPT OSS 120B is because we have that extra memory. So you can see over here that we're using a good portion of that 96 gigabytes of memory just to run this model. Now, of course, you can run larger models, performance can be different depending on what you run, but this is a really good example of why a system like this is becoming so popular, because if you can run large models, and you have a decent GPU in there, it's a good recipe for a lot of really easy local AI inference. Of course, next, let's talk about power consumption and noise. And by the way, since Arizona, uh, while it's doing inference, I actually can't hear it over the air conditioner. This thing is running at about 36, 37 dBA normally in our testing running these. Also, we're only about 120, 126 watts while it's running this AI inference workload. So pretty darn good in terms of power consumption. It's much lower than like a high-end GPU and it's an entire system. And even after it's running for a little while, we're generally getting this thing into only about 39 to 41 dBA. So at idle, it's pretty darn quiet. When it's running, this is definitely acceptable if you're, especially if you're not like facing directly towards the system. Now we definitely have some key lessons learned and some gotchas that we're gonna get to next. Now, if you've been watching STH for some time, you know that with our videos, I love to have a key lessons learned. And what do we learn from the system? First off, the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 is a great processor. I love the fact this has 128 gigabytes of memory because even if you weren't using it for AI, you still have a huge memory footprint and a good GPU. But on the other hand, you can do that allocation, give a good amount of memory to the GPU and have you know, just an awesome system. The negative side, of course, is that it is just under $2,000, which is a lot. It's more than the GMK Tech box on most days, depending on discounts, but it's also a lot less than the framework box and it's all put together in a nice package for you and probably has better connectivity. So I don't necessarily think that this is disadvantaged compared to the framework, and especially in terms of performance is fairly similar. And on the other hand, it's just an easy package. It looks great. They definitely made it look like a Mac Studio. Now with all of the good stuff, I do want to talk about some of the weird things that happen. Now the first one, of course, is when we fired up the system, we had the Windows 11 Pro setup, and that was just normal that we are normally used to seeing from other many, many PC vendors, even large PC vendors. You always get a setup thing, and once you get through it, I was kind of expecting that we would just get a completely vanilla install, but instead we got a couple of programs that I didn't put on there. I have no clue what they are, and I don't really understand why they're there. So be like, my feedback is as a smaller PC vendor, the idea is not let's go and put junkware on my system because I don't want it. And it's a little bit, actually it was kind of hard to remove because you couldn't just do it from add remove programs. Not only does that not add value adding those preloaded programs, but it actually decreases the value because I trust the image less if you're putting those programs on there. The other big thing though, is let's talk about the networking. 
Now the Intel E610 that came in here is a newer NIC from Intel. And overall, that's great, and it's a much higher end solution than something like a Realtek NIC. So in terms of performance, a newer NIC is always good, and that's what we want. On the other hand, there are some teething issues and some challenges with this. One of the big challenges with this solution is that the firmware on the NIC, the BIOS and all that kind of stuff with the new drivers, we ran into issues. When we initially started up the system, the NICs worked absolutely fine. And then we did some updates and we lost the NICs because apparently the NIC firmware is uh, is not great. And so we found the issue, we sent a note to B-Link and there is a fix coming. They should have newer firmware than they do on the NIC when it shipped to us. But of course, we usually get these earlier than you would buy them and get them. I think you know the website for B-Link has these on pre-sale. So they're answering support tickets on it right now. So I do think it's gonna be one of those ones that gets fixed over time. Still just a bummer that we had to deal with it. Now we have another one of these systems that is not on set here. So we have four of these AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 systems. And guys, this is probably my favorite one at this point, especially when you come to all the things like value and just all the stuff they put in here. I think overall Beeling did an awesome job at this one, guys. And that's why this video is coming out when it is. We're actually putting this ahead of some other videos in our schedule because I really like this. But there's one other thing I want to talk about on the AI side, and that's really just the AMD, using AMD for AI and applications like that, right? At the end of the day, you're still better off. Like if you can go buy a NVIDIA RTX Pro 6000 Blackwell Edition, I mean, that is a better GPU solution than this. It's faster, it has more memory bandwidth. And frankly, having NVIDIA means that everything in the AI community pretty much will work out of the box. Now, on the other hand, there are ways to get things to work. Like if you wanna get comfy UI working or something like that, there are ways to do it. But AMD just doesn't have the emphasis on making that a great experience, which is something I wish was just better. And that's not necessarily specific to this B-Link unit. It's in relation to all of these units, right? It's not just, not just this one. Something that AMD is doing as a company is they're putting a lot more emphasis on their AI software with things like Rock'em 7. And so I do see this is gonna be one of those boxes that gets better over time. I would say that Nvidia is still ahead, but these AMD solutions are darn good. And by the way, guys, with all these videos, I love to know what you guys think. So let me know down in the comments. Now guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.